Hey guys, so today I'm here with the Rubicon Express 2.5 inch standard coil lift kit with your choice of monotube or twin tube shocks, fitting all 2007 to 2018 four door JK Wranglers. So lifting your Wrangler offers you a number of different benefits between performance and aesthetics. So if you're looking for a lift kit that's going to increase your performance for the trail, if you're looking for a lift kit to level out the rake on your Jeep and create a more aggressive stance, this option by Rubicon Express is gonna be a really good one to take a look into. So this is going to include all of the components that you need to get your Jeep up and off the ground and get that height that you may be looking for while also leaving room down the road to add components to your suspension like track bars, control arms, and so on. Not to mention this is going to offer two different kinds of shocks with the lift kit. One is going to be a twin tube shock and one is going to be a monotube shock and I do really like that because it lets you tailor this to your application and what you want to do with your Wrangler. So with the twin tube shock this is going to be for more of somebody who is looking to do some daily driving, even some lighter trails. It is going to be more of a factory style replacement. However, the ones behind me are accommodated for that extra height on our Wrangler. However, they're really not made to be worked really hard like a monotube shock. So if you're looking to do some harder trails or you're looking to work your shocks really hard, like bumps at fast speeds, and you want that shock to last a longer time, then a monotube shock will be right up your alley. So a monotube is going to be a little bit different as far as internal design goes. They are going to be a little bit more efficient uh, separating that oil and the gas in chambers, which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail later on in the video. However, this is going to be for somebody who's looking to split that trail and street performance. They're looking to do trails as well as create a comfortable ride on the street. So overall, a twin tube is going to be for somebody who's really focused on comfortable driving on the street, maybe some lighter trails on the weekends, and a monotube is really for somebody who's looking for that split. They're looking for a little bit more performance that a twin tube offers, but they're also looking for that comfortable ride. Now, as far as tires go, 35s are your recommended size. Now, 33s are gonna be a little bit smaller. They're gonna allow you more room in your wheel well for a little bit more up travel and articulation off-road. However, they may look a little small as far as the stance goes. Now, 35 is gonna fill up that wheel well very nicely. You're still gonna have room for up travel, but it is gonna be well fitted in that wheel well and you still are going to have all of that performance and that's what's going to be recommended with this kit. Now 37 inch tire guys is going to be a little bit too big for that wheel well. You may have some rubbing especially with the stock bumper from scrub to scrub or wheel lock to wheel lock and you're not going to have a lot of up travel at all. It's going to be very stuffed inside that wheel well so a 35 inch tire is going to be your best bet. So as far as price goes this is going to be roughly $600 with the twin tube shocks and then for the monotube shocks you are going to be looking at about $700. Now like I said that monotube shock is going to be a little bit more expensive because of the internal design being a little bit more efficient. It's more of an upgrade over that twin tube so I think that price is very justified. Not to mention I do really like again that they give you the choice between the monotube and the twin tube. It lets you tailor that performance to your Wrangler and a lot of other kits don't give you that option to tailor the kit to what your needs are. Now in comparison to a lot of other lift kits on the site. Usually the more components you have within the lift kit, the more expensive it is and just the opposite for the lesser expensive options. Now this kit I think is going to be right in the middle. This comes with really everything that you need to get that height on your Wrangler and those lesser expensive options may not include everything you see here. They may just be for coils. They may be a spacer lift and not include shocks. And then on the other hand, those more expensive options are going to be for more components that you see on this lift kit right now. They may include track bars front or rear they may include control arms and so on so overall I do really think that this is a good lift kit for the price it's very inclusive and you can tell that there is quality in the components so it's going to last a very long time so I is going to be a three out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter most lift kits are so I would recommend to take this to a mechanic or if you're looking to tackle this in your driveway it should take you about six hours to do with some basic hand tools and some very minor drilling so speaking of the install so let's jump into that now. The tools that I use for my install were a dead blow, a marker, a 5 16 inch and 3 16 inch drill bit, a pair of safety glasses, a vice grip, WD-40 or any penetrating lubricant, a set of hand ratchets, a set of standard and metric sockets, an 18 millimeter and 16 millimeter swivel socket, a set of standard and metric wrenches, a 16 millimeter ratcheting wrench, a center punch, a trim removal tool, 
pneumatic impacts, an electric impact, a drill, a 10 inch extension, and a five inch extension. So we're gonna start in the front. So the first thing you wanna do is get your Jeep up in the air, whether you have it on a lift like we do or on jack and jack stands, then you're going to want to take your tires off. I use a 19 millimeter socket for our lug nuts. However, it may be different for you. And then we're gonna go ahead and support our front axle. So I'm using pole jacks here. If you are on the ground, you can use jack stands. Just make sure your axle is high enough so we can lower it in order to get our higher or our taller springs in. Then we can take off our sway bar links. So now we can remove our sway bar end links. I'm starting on the driver's side. So I'm going to be using an 18 millimeter deep socket as well as an 18 millimeter wrench. Now we can do the same thing for the other side. So before we go ahead and move to the other side, we do need to take off this nut that's holding on the top of our sway bar end link. I'm gonna be using a 19 millimeter wrench to keep the stud still, and then an 18 millimeter deep socket to remove that nut. So now that we're over on the passenger side, we do have this track bar bracket here. Now we do have limited room, so I'm gonna be using an 18 millimeter swivel on the bolt head side and that same 18 millimeter wrench on the nut side. Now we're going to repeat that same process with the top stud, 18 millimeter deep socket, and the 19 millimeter wrench. So now in order to allow our axle to drop low enough to get in our taller spring, I am going to disconnect the track bar at the axle side. I'll be using a 21 millimeter socket. And as you can see, I did have to disconnect our dual uh, steering stabilizer. I just got that out of the way with a 9 16th inch socket as well as a 19 millimeter socket and wrench. And then we'll be able to have enough room in order to remove that bolt. As you can see, our axle shifted, and then we'll be able to lower it enough to get our new springs in. So now we can go ahead and remove our lower shock bolt. I'm gonna be using an 18 millimeter wrench and an 18 millimeter socket. So now we can remove the top shock nut that's holding in the top of our shock. Now you're gonna need a 16 millimeter wrench as well as a 16 millimeter ratcheting wrench or just two 16 millimeter wrenches. We're going to put our non-ratcheting on our shock body. There is going to be a place where you can put it. I'm just gonna tap it into place since this is painted and has a little bit of rust on it so it doesn't wanna go on right away. So that's going to hold that still. As you can tell, we can move this around. That's gonna hold our shock body still while we get the nut off of that stud. So I'm using a 16 millimeter ratcheting wrench. We're on the driver's side, so there is a little bit of room where we can get that ratcheting part over the stud. So I'd recommend you hit it with a penetrating oil before you go ahead and start ratcheting just because these studs are very well known to break. They do rust very easily, so just be mindful of that. But it looks like ours broke free pretty okay. Then you can grab that top nut, get that off of there. Be careful, it might be a little warm. Then we can wiggle our shock out. Now you want to make sure that you grab that top hardware because that will be replaced. It's going to be a washer as well as a bushing. We can get this out of the way and move to the other side. Now we can do the same thing for the other side. You're going to have a little bit more room over on the passenger side with your impact wrench. Now if it, the axle drops on you like that and you're unable to get the bolt out, 
All you have to do is just tinker with the axle height. So you'll see that the shock moves more into the shock body and then it'll loosen up this bolt here. You can wiggle it right on out. Then we can move to the top. So for the passenger side, there's not a lot of room to work with because of the battery box here. If you do wedge a wrench in here and break it, it's okay. It does not support any structure. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually switch my wrenches. So I have my ratcheting wrench holding my shock body still, and I'm gonna take my 16 millimeter box wrench, go ahead and get that nut off of the top stud. Again, I would recommend to soak them in a penetrating lubricant. I use PB Blaster for this, and it has helped out a whole lot. So our next step is gonna to be to drop our axle. However, we wanna make sure we keep an eye on our brake lines so we are not maxing them out and potentially damaging them. So I'm just going to wiggle this ABS line out of this bracket here. And then that will expose that 10 millimeter bolt that's holding in our brake line bracket. So I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and just remove that. We're just gonna unhook that, just so we have a little bit more slack in our brake line. So what we can do at this point is lower our axle and remove our springs. We wanna to try to keep the axle as even as possible and also keep an eye on those brake lines. So our breather tube is on our brake line bracket. I'm just gonna take a trim removal tool and remove that so we can continue to lower the axle. So the first step of our install is going to involve preparing our spring perch for a bump stop. So we do have to drill a 5 16 inch hole. So what we're going to do first is just place our bump stop up on top of our spring perch. And I am just going to make a mark with a Sharpie to make sure that that's centered. And we can take this away and grab our center punch as well as our drill bits. So in the center where you've marked, you can take a center punch and mark that location for your bump stop extension. Now I'm gonna start a pilot hole with a 3 16 inch bit and then step up to a 5 16 inch. I'm just using a lubricant to preserve the life of my drill bit and the sharpness of the drill bit. Now with the spring and the bump stop extension in hand, we're gonna go ahead and try to pop in our spring. So you wanna make sure that you turn it until that pigtail is set in the indent in the front of the spring. So now that our bump stop extension and our spring is in place, we can secure down our bump stop extension. You are provided with a self-tapping bolt. So we're going to place that down in and line it up with that hole in the bottom. Maybe a little bit tricky at first, but you will feel it. And this is a self-tapping bolt. So once you get that over the hole, we can take a 9 16th inch socket and ratchet. Go ahead and tighten that down. All right, now we can repeat that process on the other side.
So if you can't get your axle dropped low enough, I would recommend either have a friend pull it down a little bit, or you could grab a pry bar and pull it down a little bit. Uh, but we just need enough room to pop our spring in. So at this point, we're ready to install our shocks, but since this kit does come with twin tube shocks, we do have to install our metal sleeves inside our bushings. Now you are gonna be using the metal sleeves with 60859 imprinted on the metal sleeve. You do get a couple of options out of the kit. However, the other choices are for a TJ. So we are gonna be using the JK option and you're going to need a vise and then we can go ahead and press them in. So I do also like the fact that Rubicon Express did offer a sleeve with their shocks. This is going to protect the shaft, make sure it does not get nicked or damaged while you're out on the trail, preserving the lifetime of the shock because it can uh, induce shock fade if you do catch a nick to that shaft. So I do like that that is there. You do get a couple zip ties with this. Uh, the larger end is gonna go on the side of the box, shock body and then the smaller end is gonna go up top at the shaft and all you have to do is zip tie the bottom and clip off the excess. So let's go ahead and open up the vise and we can press in our metal sleeve. So first I'm going to prepare the bushing with a little bit of lubricant, make sure that that metal sleeve goes in easy. And then we can position the metal sleeve where we need it and tighten up our vise. That's sitting in place nicely and then we can do the same thing for our other front shock. Rear shocks are going to be a little bit different. We do have bar pins for those. However, I'll show you how to do that in just a minute when we get to the rear. But it will be a similar process. All right, now we're ready to install our shocks on our Wrangler. So your upper shock hardware is gonna consist of two bushings and two cup washers. You're gonna to want to place the bottom cup washer and then a bushing, and then we're gonna do the exact opposite on the other side. So first we're going to put our shock into place. Then we can put our bushing and cup washer on the top there. If you have to move that out of the way, you can. Then we can take our supplied nut and thread that on. Then you can take a 19 millimeter wrench. You can either use a ratcheting wrench or an open-ended or box wrench, and we can just tighten that down. If you need to move the boot down out of the way, you can. It's very e you can very easily put it back on, but this is just gonna make sure that you keep an eye on the shaft and make sure it's not turning within the shock body. So because you're, you are using an open-ended wrench, uh, you may be able to fit a ratcheting wrench over top of that uh, shock stud, but it may take you a little bit. However, once it is uh, pretty tight, you don't want to over-tighten it, but once it is tight enough, you can move on to the lower shock body. So now we can take our factory hardware and put that into place. You may have to tinker with the height of the axle to get it lined up. I lifted our axle up a little bit. We can slide our bolt into place. And then we can secure down our nut and tighten that down with a 18 millimeter wrench and 18 millimeter socket. Now we can do the same thing on the other side. So as you can tell on the passenger side, we're not really lining up all that well, but if we raise our axle and just mess around with that height, 
making sure we keep an eye on our lift points, we can line up that bolt hole. That looks pretty good. There we go. Then we can tighten that down with our 18 millimeter socket and 18 millimeter wrench. So before we go ahead and move to the rear, I do want to address the brake lines up at the front. Now this kit does not provide any drop brackets or any hardware to accommodate for that extra height that we're getting out of our coil springs as well as our shocks. So there's a couple of ways you can go about this because you definitely want to make sure that these are accommodated for uh, before you move on to the rest of the installation. Now you can go with a more expensive solution and get longer brake lines, or you can take an inexpensive route. You can either straighten out this metal hard line you are able to outsource four drop brackets for two and a half inches of lift, or you can take a self-tapping screw and tap right into the frame there with the existing bracket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to straighten out this hard line, give it a little bit more length, so when the axle is at full droop, you are not gonna damage your brake lines and stress out your brake lines because they are very important. So what I'm gonna do is just secure our brake line bracket to our frame with our factory hardware. Take a 10 millimeter socket and tighten that up. So as you can tell, this is a little tight even with the axle compressed. I moved the axle up. If you do that, just keep an eye on your lift points. And then I'm gonna take a pair of pliers, making sure our ABS line is out of the way. And very carefully, just bend that hard line down. So then at full droop, even if I move the axle down, your brake lines are going to be preserved and they won't be maxed out. So the last two steps that we have to do in the front is going to involve resecuring our track bar as well as resecuring our sway bar end links. However, we are going to move to the rear installation and uninstallation first, just because we have to move our rear sway bar end links up to the front to accommodate for that extra lift height. And we want to secure our track bar while it is on the ground and on its own weight. So we're gonna go ahead and move to the rear. So just like the front, our first step is gonna be to support our axle. And then our next step is gonna to be to remove our sway bar end links. So I'm going to start with the lower sway bar end link bolt. Uh, it is gonna be behind our shock, so I recommend either taking your shock out first with the axle supported, but what I'm gonna do is just use an extension to sneak behind that shock there. It's gonna have an 18 millimeter socket on the end of the extension and then an 18 millimeter wrench on the other side for the nut. We can go ahead and remove it. So now we can move to the top using a 19 millimeter wrench to keep that stud still. And then we can use an 18 millimeter socket to go ahead and remove the sway bar and length nut. Now we can remove our lower shock bolt using that same 18 millimeter socket and wrench. Now again, to get that shock bolt out, you might have to tinker with the axle height. I just moved it up a little bit. And then we can remove our shock. 
So now for the upper portion of our rear shocks, you are gonna have a bar pin that's held in by two 16 millimeter bolts. So what I'm gonna do is use a 10 inch extension and a 16 millimeter swivel and go ahead and remove those two bolts. There's one, and then there's also one on the other side. So after those are removed, what I'm gonna do is just lower the axle just a little bit, and wiggle our shock right out. So we're just gonna repeat that process for the other side. So to allow our axle to fully drop, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with our front track bar. We're gonna disconnect our rear track bar at the axle side using a 21 millimeter socket. So as you can tell, that shifted our axle. This is respons responsible for centering our axle underneath our Jeep. And we will have a relocation bracket for the rear that we're going to install in just a minute. But now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our brake lines. So with a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna disconnect this brake line bracket. And then we can disconnect our rear ABS lines from our frame using a trim removal tool. And that should give us enough slack on this side to drop our axle. We can do the same thing on the other side. So we have to disconnect one more thing before we can lower our axle. I'm gonna take a removal, trim removal tool and just disconnect this line from the top of our differential here. Now we're ready to lower our axle and take out our springs. So I would recommend just to keep an eye on all of your brake lines, ABS lines, and then you have your locker actuating uh, line right here. So just Keep an eye on those, even though we did disconnect them, you wanna make sure that you're not stressing them out. Now if you have enough room, you can go ahead and remove your spring. So if your breather line pops off, that's okay. We'll connect it when our axle is compressed. It just pulls off, it's just a hose. Uh, but then we can go ahead, wiggle out our spring if you can get the axle low well enough for you. So before we go ahead and finish up the rear installation, I did want to put these components on the table next to the factory components and tell you guys a little bit more about these and what benefits that you're getting out of this new lift kit in comparison to your factory suspension. So right off the bat, you are replacing a couple of different components, which is going to serve as an upgrade in the lift kit as far as height goes, but it's also going to replace some damaged or maybe worn out components. As you can see here, we have a ton of rust uh, on our shock and this new shock is going to serve as a really nice upgrade for that. So starting off with the coils, these are what's going to give you the height out of your lift kit. The coils are about two and a half inches taller than your factory coil springs. Uh, so that's going to give you that lift that you're looking for out of the lift kit. But these are also gonna be tuned for bump compliance as well as load handling. So it's gonna give you a comfortable ride and that's something that you want to expect out of a quality coil spring. Now moving on to the sway bar end links, they're gonna be pretty similar uh, as far as length goes. These are for the rear, so you are moving the rear sway bar end links from the factory up to the front to accommodate for that front lift height, but you are getting new rear sway bar end links. So the difference between your factory one and the new Rubicon Express sway bar end link is just that you're deleting this ball joint attachment up at the top here. So you are getting two standard bushings, which is gonna last a little bit longer than your factory ball joint, which can fail over time. 
So starting off with the twin tube design, it's exactly how it says in the name. There's gonna be two tubes internally in this shock body. One tube is gonna be filled with gas and one tube is gonna be filled with oil. So when the piston moves through the oil, all of that energy is absorbed in the outer tube, which is going to be filled with that gas. Now this is going to be a very standard design. You're gonna see this on most stock setups. It's very similar to your factory design, except for this shock is gonna be uh, able to accommodate that extra two and a half inches of height so internally they are going to be basically the same thing and what these are perfect for is a comfortable drive so these are going to feel very fluid uh, and very comfortable on the street they're not really made for a lot of performance uh, so these aren't going to really help you out on those really rough trails where you're working the shock really hard because they are going to be susceptible to shock fade over time which is cavitation or foaming forming inside of the shock due to being worked really hard so these aren't going to have a crazy long lifespan uh, if you are working the shock really hard. However, these are perfect for the daily driver and perfect for a replacement to your factory shock as a quality replacement. So if you are looking to get the most out of your shocks, if you're looking to do some harder trails or go over more bumps at faster speeds than you would with a twin tube shock, that's gonna be more up your alley than a twin tube shock. That's going to be able to preserve the life of your shock and reduce shock fade over time. So it really comes down to your application. This is going to be a perfect replacement to your factory shock because it is basically the same thing. It is very similar, except for this is going to accommodate for that extra height. So not to mention you are getting a number of different components with this lift kit to accommodate for that extra height, including a rear track bar relocation bracket. You are getting bump stop extensions and you are getting cam washers, which will be able to adjust your caster when you go get your Jeep aligned. So enough about these components on the table. Let's go ahead and finish up our lift kit. So with our factory isolator, what we can do now is install our new springs. You wanna make sure that your axle is dropped low enough that you're able to get in that new spring. I'm just going to raise it up a little bit just so it stays in place so we can get the other side in. All right, now we can move over to the other side. So now we can go ahead and install our bump stop extensions for the rear. You wanna make sure that the shelf portion, the top portion is facing the front of the vehicle and this bottom offset tab is facing the rear of the vehicle. Then you're gonna grab your provided hardware for the bump stop extension and we can secure it down to the base of where your bump stop would hit on the axle. So you're gonna have one on this outer tab and then the other one is going to be on the inside. So now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those down with a 14 millimeter wrench and a 14 millimeter socket. So our next step will be to install our rear shocks, but we do have to prepare them just like we did with our front ones. So we are gonna be provided with the same metal sleeves for the bottom part of our rear shocks, but for the top part, we do have a different attachment style. We are gonna be provided with a bar pin instead of a metal sleeve. So we're gonna go ahead and press in our sleeves first and then our bar pins. Now we can press the sleeve in place at the bottom of our shock body. You wanna make sure that this shock body is facing down and the shaft is facing up. And we can go ahead and press that in. All 
right. All right, now we can flip our shock over and work on that bar pin. So this part is not going to be the easiest just because we have to fit the bar pin, which is a little bit larger, through this smaller bushing here. So what I'm going to do is make sure that this is lubricated really well. I'm actually going to place the top of our shock into the vice grip just so we can get the top of this started. So since that's started in the bushing now, we can take this out widen up our vice grip and I'm going to start to press that in just so it reaches the other side of that bushing. So what I'm doing at this point is just positioning the shock on just the bushing on the vice grip and leaving a little bit of space underneath to push that bar pin through. So as you can tell, I only have that bottom lip of the bushing and I only have this bottom pin of the bar pin. So that's gonna leave it enough space to push it all the way through. But once those pins, that tapered end is through, should be able to put that through and move it around, position it where we want it. So now we're ready to put these on our Jeep. So before we put in our rear shocks, we do need enough room in order to install our rear track bar bracket. So we're gonna be installing that track bar bracket on the frame side. So we do need to remove our track bar fully. So I'm gonna use a uh, adjustable wrench and a 21 millimeter socket in order to do that. So we're gonna loosen up this bolt with that 21 millimeter socket and an adjustable wrench. Now be careful when you loosen this, this might drop down. So either have something to catch it or just keep uh, in mind. So now we can go ahead and install our track bar bracket. This tab is going to fit over this bracket here, and then the actual bracket is going to fit inside our factory bracket. So it is a little tight. I'm going to tap it into place. Try to get it positioned as close to the hole as you can. Then we're going to take our smaller hardware, put that through our new bracket as well as the frame side bracket. Secure that down on the other side. You're gonna have two flat washers, a nut and a bolt. So now we can take our crush sleeve and insert our new bolt in the bolt hole provided by Rubicon Express. Just wiggle that on through. Then we're going to secure that with the other flat washer and the nut on the other side. So now we can go ahead and tighten those down, starting with that bolt that we just put in. I'm going to use a 21 millimeter socket and that same adjustable wrench. Now I'm gonna tighten up that top bolt with a 19 millimeter socket and a 19 millimeter wrench. Now we can go ahead and install our rear track bar the same way that we took it out with our factory bolt.
So once your track bar is connected in the track bar drop bracket, your bottom mount should line up pretty well. If you do have to tinker with the height of the axle to get that lined up, you might have to. However, it should line up pretty good. So just to get the flag nut started, I would recommend using a hand ratchet as well as a 21 millimeter socket. And then once that's on, you can move to an impact wrench. Now we can just tighten up that top bolt and then move on to our shocks. Then we can tighten up our top track bar bolt with that a same adjustable wrench and 21 millimeter socket. Then we can move on to installing our shocks. So what I'm gonna do is thread in one of the factory bolts. Then we can take the bar pin on the top of our shock, hook that onto that bolt that we just threaded in, take our other bolt and thread that into the other hole. So now that that bar pin is captured there, we can take our 16 millimeter swivel and 10 inch extension or whatever size extension you wanna use and we can tighten them down. Then we can secure down the bottom of our shock with our factory bolt. If you have to tinker with the axle height, you can do so with your pull jacks or your floor jacks or your jack stands. And then we can tighten that down with an 18 millimeter socket and 18 millimeter wrench. And then move on to the other side. So again, I'm gonna thread in one bolt on the side that's a little bit harder to reach. Once that's about halfway threaded, we can hook our bar pin. Then we can go ahead and secure that bottom. So now we're going to move on to installing our rear sway bar end links. You are going to be provided a new bolt by Rubicon Express. We're going to put that on the outside of our sway bar. Thread that through. Secure down the new nylon lock nut that they provide. Now I'm just going to secure the bottom as well before we go ahead and tighten it down. You're going to take your factory bolt, put that in the factory orientation. on that nut. Now we can go ahead and tighten that down. You're gonna need a 19 millimeter socket and wrench up top and then that same 18 millimeter socket and wrench down at the bottom. So we can tighten down this top bolt. Then we're gonna tighten down that bottom one as well. I'm gonna be using an extension for this since it, we are sneaking behind our shock there. Now we can move to the other side.
So our last step is up front. We are going to be swapping our rear sway bars up to the front since they are longer. So that's going to accommodate for our lift height, but we're going to install them exactly how they came off. So the stud goes up top. We'll thread on that nut there. And then we can install our factory bolt down at the bottom. So for this top bolt, I'm gonna be using that 19 millimeter wrench to keep these studs still. And then 18 millimeter deep socket to tighten that down. Then we're gonna tighten up that bottom. I'm using an 18 millimeter swivel again, and then I'll be using an 18 millimeter so or a wrench on the other side. Then we can move over to the other side. So our last step before we move up front to finish our sway bar end links up there, we need to secure down our brake line. So we're going to hook that back into the frame, thread in that bolt, and then we can tighten it down with that 10 millimeter socket. Then we can go ahead and just pop your ABS back in. If you want to move this clip a little lower down to give yourself some extra slack, you can. Then we can do the same thing on the other side. So this is gonna be a little bit difficult to see because we do have the steering stabilizer in the way but we are going to re-bolt up our track bar. I have someone in the driver's seat. How you can get this lined up is obviously to have the Jeep on its own weight, but you can turn the wheel back and forth and that will move the axle back and forth to get this lined up. So I have someone in the driver's seat right now. It looks like this is lined up pretty okay. So I'm going to grab our factory bolt and put that through. All right, so now that our bolt is in and on the other side, we're going to secure down that flag nut. Then we can go ahead and tighten that down with a 21 millimeter socket. I'm also using an extension to clear the drag link. Now my last step is gonna to be to secure this steering stabilizer, but most of you guys won't have this, so I'm gonna do that off camera. So that's gonna wrap it up for my review and install. Make sure you like and subscribe, and for more videos and products like this, always keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.